Our next speaker is uh, Kate Craig Wood, and she's the co-founder, sorry, and managing director of Memset. And Kate is a multi-award winning technology entrepreneur. Uh, she's the owner manager of Memset, which is a leading managed hosting and cloud uh, ISaaS provider and uh, is a renowned expert advocate on green ICT and cloud computing. And Kate, we've seen it mentioned a couple of times here today and yesterday, significantly contributed to the formation of the G Cloud um, and is now among a new breed of SMEs supplying ICT services to the public. So I think she's well qualified to uh, comment on this and she's gonna hate me for saying this but she's literally just returned from her honeymoon in Indonesia. So, Kate. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, after that fabulous introduction, I, I think I can skip my first slide. Um, <clears throat> uh, just, just a little bit about me. I'm, I'm, I'm a technologist, I'm a geek. Uh, I started programming on one of those when I was about eight. Um, I'll try and keep this not too technical, but I apologize if I do diverge into that, that sphere. Um, I founded Memset in 2002 with the idea to rent out virtual machines on a short time frame, which proved quite popular. Um, I do a lot of work with industry, um, particularly around uh, environmental matters, uh, as was mentioned, passionate environmentalist, um, and also I, I do a lot of uh, industry rep representation um, on cloud computing. Most notably, I'm um, uh, part of the European Cloud Partnership Steering Board, which we had our second meeting of yesterday, or my second meeting of yesterday. So what does Memset do? We're an infrastructure as a service provider or a hosting company. What that actually means is that we take computers like that, just like a computer you've got at home in a slightly different box. We stick it into a data center that looks a bit like that. And then we add in some open source software to split it up into small chunks and rent it out to people. Now, I, I go through this because quite often I think, you know, we're talking about cloud and concepts and it can get a little bit hypothetical, a little bit ethereal, and I like to kind of ground it. It's just computers connected to the internet. Um, in terms of where, oh, that's gone a bit wrong. Um, in terms of where we sit, um, sit, basically we do this bit. So we look after the data center, the network, the physical servers, the virtualization. Um, and then what that should say, that's platform as a service, and that's the, the software as a service. So most of our customers are operating uh, software packages on top of our platform. Um, we're very, very focused. We, we really just worry about um, you know, operating a very highly efficient um, infrastructure stack that other people can build on top of. Now, this bit will sound a bit like a sales pitch, but bear with me because there is a, bit, there is a point to it. Um, now, how, how, how do we compete? It's a very competitive marketplace out there. Um, first of all, we're better than our competitors. Um, and you don't have to take my word for this. We dominate in the UK industry awards. Um, we've won the PC Pro Best Web Post Award for seven out of the eight, um, eight last years. The one we didn't win, we, we were runner-up. Um, we're also, uh, partly because of my uh, passionate, uh, passion about environmentalism, um, extremely green. We are uh, Britain's most energy efficient um, host. That's not just because we have a two megawatt solar farm next door. Um, it's because we've spent a, a decade of research and, and development um, focusing on the optimally efficient uh, uh, um, infrastructure platform to host our virtual machines. You know, what's the fine tuning the amount of, of RAM, to CPU and, and so forth. We're also a lot cheaper than our competitors. Um, the, the top prices, they're Amazons, but the bottom prices are, are, are ours. And there's not a small difference between there. Um, so we compete on price as well. Uh, and finally, we excel at security. Um, that building might not look much, it's ours, um, but it's actually a, a, a fortress. It's also on a secure site called Dunsfeld Aerodrome, um, where, where Top Gear is filmed, in, in case you're curious. Um, and I'll, I'll mention that building later. So, so why should you care about all of that? You know, so, so, so what if we're good at what we do? Well, there are two reasons. First of all, we are a tiny company. I have 35 staff, and this year I'll turn over about 5 million euros. It's a family-owned business. We don't have any venture capitalists on board. My brother and I um, own it between us and a, a few other sort of uncles and family members. Second, those high-quality, low-cost services we are supplying to government at those prices. And this is uh, just unprecedented in the UK. Um, and it's not just you know, some local authorities either. You know, our, our customers include the BBC and the Cabinet Office. We actually host the cloud store that you've seen some uh, screenshots um, of uh, in, in previous presentations. Um, oh yes, and that's just, as, as an example, that's what the cloud store looks like when you search for something and, and, and there's one of our services. 
So how, how do we do this? How, as a tiny little company, do we manage to compete with, with uh, global giants and, and manage to um, supply to the public sector? Um, there's a big part of it is we have really good people. I'm very lucky. I've got a very good team. Um, as an aside, sourced um, from across the breadth of Europe, I'm, I'm very much hoping that uh, the, the Britain's current uh, anti-European sentiment doesn't take hold because um, I, I need my uh, uh, European immigrant workers. Um, but, we're, but despite being a small company, the first thing is we're very focused on a, a sort of very proceduralized approach based on um, international standards. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is that almost all the standards, so the ICO1's there, that, that's the uh, Chartered Institute of Professional Development, so it's sort of human resources, they're mostly not cloud specific. Um, even the G Cloud one, actually, that's almost entirely based on ISO 27001. Um, the one that is specific is the, uh, uh, the Code of Conduct for Data Centers, which is, which is very good, but it's a voluntary uh, code of practice. It's, uh, it's common sense. Um, and even the carbon neutral one, that, that's a generic standard as well. Um, the other thing we do is we're completely an, an open source shop, and we also use uh, uh, commodity hardware. What we're really good at when it comes down to it is taking open source hardware and cheap commodity server um, and deploying enterprise services from it, which isn't actually that unusual. I mean, it's fundamentally what, uh, what the big players do as well. Um, finally, we're a very scientific organization. So we collect a lot of data, we analyze it. Don't worry about this chart, it's just to look pretty. Um, and we use that to, to inform our decision-making processes. So how did we get into government? Um, well, that's mainly thanks to G Cloud, which I did have a hand in creating. Um, it was actually pretty simple. First of all, we just had to sign up to the G Cloud framework, um, which is a broad framework that allows many companies to, uh, to supply to government. Um, as part of that, only very minimal terms were applied. So our terms and conditions stand, and then there's some other terms um, that, that sort of get bolted on top of that, but they're very lightweight. They fit on, onto about one page of A4. The key part, though, is this pan-government accreditation. I'm going to come onto that briefly in, in the next slide. Um, then we listed our services on the cloud store. We didn't have to go and hire a new sales force. We, we don't really have a sales force per se. It's more some people that answer the phone and, and take credit card numbers. Um, the public sector customers could see us. They made a short list um, or make short lists of um, the suppliers that look suitable, and then they pick the cheapest. Um, they just then have to sign a call-off contract, but actually the deal is made between us um, and the, the government department directly. So it's a very simple process. Um, this one's a bit more complex. It builds on some of the stuff Mark was talking about, so the, the, this idea of impact levels. Now, the, the, the way <clears throat> the British government do it is, is they define there's actually six impact levels. It's going to be simplified. But to give you an idea, um, impact level two is actually defined as um, up to a million pounds of, of cost to government or something that could compromise an individual's safety. The next level up, three, is one to 10 million pounds of cost or um, uh, a minor injury to a group of people, or two to seven uh, days of pain for someone. So, so that's starting to get a little bit more serious. At the lower level, impact level two, it's just in um, ISO 27001. Uh, it's basically that and a few little extra bits bolted on, like making sure you've done proper CRB um, background checks on your staff. Even when you get up to the um, IL-3, <clears throat> one of the things we've, we've uh, learned, it seemed very mysterious, uh, it was called um, HMG InfoSec Standards 1 and 2, but when you actually drill down into it, it's the same 133 controls as from the ISO 27001 standard, just with a lot more um, meat on them and, and, and some more requirements. Then there's things like some penetration testing, um, making sure the, the staff are really thoroughly vetted um, by government as well. The other difference with, with that next level up is that it's not connected to the public internet. So like most governments, Britain has a, um, a, a private uh, government network. It's called uh, the public sector network, um, or it's, which is a sort of um, conglomeration of other secure networks. Um, so for the more secret stuff, like medical records and things we care about, that doesn't touch the public internet. And in the building I showed you earlier, um, that's actually capable of up to impact level four. So again, that kind of debunks the, debunks the myth that um, small businesses can't achieve high levels of security. No, it, it's just a building. We just have to apply some controls around who has access to what. Um, we have to use uh, you know, appropriate measures, appropriate firewalling and so forth. But it, it's bread and butter to us as, as IT professionals. Um, just uh, summing up. So what, what has G Cloud actually done? For us, um, it, it's created our government business. 
We, we were doing almost nothing in government um, a year ago. Now 5% of our turnover from a standing start um, is to government. A lot of that as well isn't directly to government. It's actually selling to software providers who in turn sell their, build um, their software as a service solution on top of our accredited platform and then sell it on to, to, to the government departments. But our government customers typically report savings of up to an order of magnitude, up to 90% savings. So if I bring you back to um, uh, David Cotterill's presentation yesterday, where he was saying that the sales to date through G Cloud have been about 60 million pounds, even if we take the, the lower of those two figures, that suggests um, a saving of over 200, sorry, 60 million pounds, of over 200 million pounds um, in the last 18 months. So don't, don't, don't be um, beguiled by the, you know, the relatively small, apparently, numbers going through G Cloud. Also, people have um, Mark touched on this as well, but that's the main thing that G Cloud has done. Traditional EU procurement actively does the thing that it's supposed to prevent. It actively discriminates. It, it, particularly in the UK, we have an oligopoly of, of large suppliers um, that were the only ones really capable of, of, of uh, bidding to many of the tenders. G Cloud has broken that down uh, and allowed new, new entrants to the market. However, to really make this fly, we need, we need to take it in, into Europe. Uh, and that's why a lot of the discussion yesterday at the European Cloud Partnership uh, Board was about um, a shared data area or, um, or, or a, a you know, European sort of shared data space. One of the big issues is at the moment, if we wanted to say sell stuff to the, the, the German government, we'd have to go through all, all of their um, hoops. And actually, I don't think we'd be capable of it at the moment. There are some other governments, though, I mean, like the Irish one. Um, but even there, we'd have to then go and uh, get reaccredited for all of that. And as a, a relatively small business, we, we just can't, um, can't stand that. So larger businesses will go and do it, and then government will pay more money as a result. Also, we really want to be able to work with some of our um, European brethren. There are some really, I mean, just here today, it's amazing, innovative companies um, you know, across the breadth of Europe that we'd love to be doing business with. Um, but, but the way that our governments approach security doesn't really mesh. Um, also, unfortunately, there is a lack of trust in the private sector. So it's, it's actually very hard to, uh, as, as I say, a British company, and I've heard the other way around, to sell to continental Europeans. Um, and, and the opposite is definitely true as well. I, I think there's an opportunity here for government to, to be a leader and, and to actually be seen to, to buying from um, e each other's um, uh, sort of small business and large businesses and, and, and lead, lead the private sector. Finally, governments need to save a huge amount of money. Um, the ICT spend in, in, in Britain and in Europe is, is too large. Um, and this is a really easy way that, that, that you could all save money. Um, one of the key things, though, in, in just closing, all of this we've achieved without using any um, new or fancy standards. It's all based on um, quite old, quite standardized um, security standards. You don't need to standardize things like uh, terms and conditions and SLAs. Um, if, because when it boils down to it, if um, the security standards cover the three things you should care about. One is confidentiality, which means you know, who has access to your data. Um, the second is availability, which means can you get your data when you need to be able to. And the third, is uh, integrity. You know, is your data going to be um, uh, preserved, backed up? Can other people go and fiddle with your data? If, if you're sat here and you're thinking, um, oh, well, what about my ability to sue a supplier when they go wrong? Then you have fundamentally failed to understand what cloud is about. And that's why we shouldn't be worrying about standardized terms and conditions and SLAs. We should be worrying about the, the technical architecture of the system and assuring that. And that really comes under the remit of security. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.